Hey everyone, I'll be giving a complete update overview for Clay's newest update, the March Quality of Life update. A big update, so let's get right into it. Crafting menu has undergone a complete overhaul. On the sidebar, we have something called pen recipes, which can be used to quick craft items pinned to the list. You can change which items are pinned on the list by removing the item, by hovering over it, and exiting it out. Then you can select your item of choice and select the empty pin to pin it. We also have a search bar so you can search the items that you would like to search for. And we have the favors tab where you can favorite an item and it will show up in the favors tabs, which will show up in all worlds. Items can now be crafted from resources and chests if they're open. The size of the new user interface can be scaled on its own in this setting here. By default, if you pre-craft something, the crafting menu will auto-close. That can be disabled so you can pre-craft a bunch of items without it closing. Items from the Tackle Receptacle Station and the Terra Firma Tamper no longer require you to be next to their stations. Then you can craft their items anywhere in the world, granted that you've learned the recipe. Adverts can be learned like blueprints, which you can only get from trading from Pearl, as birds no longer drop the adverts since their adverts are available in the Tackle Receptacle Station. Turfs that required other turfs as part of their recipes have had their recipes changed most notable one being cobblestone. Now costs one cut stone and three flint instead of one board and one rocky turf. The marsh turf is also now craftable in the tower firma tamper and all turfs stack up to 20 instead of 10. Wolfgang has been further reworked in this update. All of Wolfgang's dumbbells are available without any research stations and they've had their recipes changed. We also got a new dumbbell, the marbell. It's very cheap to make and it's better than the gold dumbbell. You can also now click on Wolfgang in order to have him use the dumbbells. While mighty, you can run around with a dumbbell to prevent mightiness from being lost and you can punch with them too to get mightiness that way as well. Wolfgang also gains mightiness from living an active life, so if you're doing a lot of activities that involve these items, you'll stay mighty rather easily. Which is nice since Wolfgang gets an efficiency buff when mining and chopping. His mightiness drain has been increased though, so if you haven't been working out for about a day to a day and a half, you're gonna end up being wimpy. The ancient guardian fight has been completely reworked. Long gone are the days where this fight is a slugfest. The ancient guardian will still charge at you, but if he hits a pillar, he'll be stunned. The duration of the stun depends on how far Ancient Guardian ran before hitting the pillar. Hitting the pillar will also cause other pillars to drop from the ceiling, which can be used to stun him as well. If you stay too close to Ancient Guardian, he'll bite you now instead of doing his previous uppercut and he'll charge after he attempts a bite. He also now has a second phase to the fight, where Nightmare Fuel starts to bleed out of him spawning giant shadow tentacles that can deal a lot of damage if you get hit by them. He can also do a giant leap attack on you that also stuns him. Overall, this fight is very easy if you know your way around the ruins and he's a lot more fun now considering that you have to kill him every time you want to kill Ancient Fuel Weaver. Not to mention, he has amazing loot now. On defeating Ancient Guardian, the game picks 6 to 8 of these lines to give you as part of his loot, which is significantly better than what Ancient Guardian used to give you. Hound and Deathworm waves have had a big change to them. You can no longer disconnect from the server to skip Hound and Deathworm waves. Instead, the lengths before another wave occurs has been significantly increased, to the point that you might question if you had the waves enabled in the first place. They've also added a new mob called the Warglit which replaces a few hounds in the wave. Think of it as a meteor hound that can summon a few extra hounds on the side. They also have a very high percent chance of spawning in the late game and sometimes you can get a double varglet wave. 
You can also now change the frequency of ice and fire hounds in the world settings. Fashion goggles and potted succulents are no longer blueprints in the crumbled packages. Instead, they're available via science machine and alchemy engine respectively. Desert goggles have a significantly increased chance of being found in crumbled packages and now also provide 120 insulation, which is the same as a tam o shanter. The cost of potted ferns and succulents has been decreased to cost only two of each plant. The drop rate of cookie cutter shells has been doubled from a 25% chance to a 50% chance. The cost of boat repair kits have been cut in half so they only cost two boards and one stinger. The repair value has also been cut in half to reflect that change. Boat patches, oars, and driftwood oars no longer require the think tank to prototype them. The Marble Trust bill has been buffed from 600 uses to a whopping 1500. Marble Trust no longer drops blueprints for the Waterfowl Can, the Feather Weave, or the Winged Sail Kit. Instead, they are available at the Alchemy Engine and the Think Tank. In terms of the main menu, the option screens now has descriptions for each of its settings telling you what they do. You can now have multiple world events enabled at the same time in the world settings menu. Roads can now be disabled in the world generation settings. They've added lore and gameplay tips onto loading screens, which can be disabled. Skin presets have gone from 10 total presets to 25. And safe slots now have Steam Cloud support. The seed packet now has a minus 50 spoilage modifier to them for the seeds it holds, the same as a fridge. Woody's Kitsuki's idols no longer spoil. The recipe for the clean sweeper has been changed to cost a stick and four flowers, which is a nice change since this item's main purpose is to change cosmetics. The sea wreath has had its cost cut in half. And most importantly of all, Scott finally got around to renaming the fishing rod to the freshwater fishing rod. The Gothic's belongings chest was released with this update alongside some spectacular skins. The Twitch streaming item that's available until April 7th, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time is the Serpentine Storm Eater skin for the Lightning Conductor. And next month's update is a character refresh, with Clay releasing this teaser image. I wonder who it could be. You can also redeem the Ancient Dulcite Wall and Ancient Stone Walls on the Clay Rewards page now. There's definitely a lot of little things that I miss, so make sure to check out the full patch notes located down below. Let me know what you like the most about the update, till next time.